Recently, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The meeting was tense, with Orban standing firm against EU financial aid to Ukraine. This meeting highlights a growing rift within Europe, especially as Ukraine looks for support against Russian aggression. So, in a time when the EU is united in backing Ukraine, why is Orban taking a different path? And why does he seem to be warming up to China more than his European neighbors? Let's explore this. Orban's stance isn't just about politics, it's about economics, strategy, and a bit of ideology too. He's been forging stronger ties with China, which offers Hungary a different kind of partnership than the EU does. This isn't just about high-level politics, it's about Hungary's place in the world and how Orban sees the future. The EU might feel like a strict teacher sometimes, with all its rules and expectations. On the other hand, China, with its vast investments and no-strings-attached approach, feels more like a generous friend to Orban. So why does Orban favor China? Let's look at the details. Let's first talk about the money, because that's a huge part of why Viktor Orban is so keen on China. Over the past few years, China has poured billions into Hungary's infrastructure, energy, and manufacturing sectors. This isn't just pocket change, we're talking about transformative investments that are reshaping the Hungarian economy. One of the most prominent examples is the Budapest-Belgrade railway project. This high-speed rail line, costing about $2.1 billion, is mostly financed by Chinese loans. It's designed to boost connectivity not just within Hungary but across the region, linking Central Europe with the Balkans. This project alone shows how deeply China is involved in Hungary's development plans. When completed, it will cut travel time significantly and improve trade routes, making Hungary a critical hub in China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Besides infrastructure, China has also been heavily investing in Hungary's energy sector. This includes renewable energy projects like solar and wind farms, as well as traditional energy infrastructure. For instance, Chinese companies have participated in upgrading Hungary's energy grid, which helps Hungary modernize its energy systems and reduce dependency on Russian energy, a significant concern for many European countries. Trade between Hungary and China has also seen a significant boost. In 2023, the trade volume reached $14.52 billion, a 73% increase compared to a decade earlier. This massive leap reflects the growing economic interdependence between the two nations. Chinese products are prevalent in Hungarian markets, and Hungarian goods are finding a significant market in China. This mutual trade expansion supports local businesses and provides consumers with a wider range of products. Chinese companies have also established manufacturing bases in Hungary. For example, several Chinese electronics and automotive companies have set up factories, creating jobs and boosting local economies. These investments not only provide immediate economic benefits but also facilitate technology transfer and skill development among Hungarian workers. So why does Orban favor China over the EU? Well, the EU often comes with strings attached, strict rules about governance, transparency, and human rights. China, on the other hand, focuses on business and development without demanding political changes, which suits Orban's style of governance. This no-strings-attached approach is appealing for a leader who often finds himself at odds with EU regulations and political pressures. Moreover, these economic ties give Orban significant leverage within the EU. He can argue that Hungary has alternative partners and isn't solely dependent on the EU, which strengthens his bargaining position in European politics. It's like having an ace up his sleeve when negotiating with Brussels, knowing he has China's support makes him more confident in standing up to EU policies he disagrees with. This economic relationship isn't just beneficial for Hungary in terms of money and infrastructure. It also reinforces Orban's political strategy. By showcasing Chinese investments and the tangible benefits they bring, Orban can justify his foreign policy choices to his domestic audience, emphasizing Hungary's sovereignty and independent path in global affairs. In essence, China's investments offer Orban a way to boost Hungary's economy, develop infrastructure, and strengthen his political position, both domestically and within the EU. This economic relationship forms a big part of why Orban is so aligned with China, despite the EU's stance on various issues. It's a partnership built on mutual benefits and strategic interests, providing Orban with the economic muscle and political leverage he needs to navigate the complex landscape of international relations. Now, let's talk about how Hungary is balancing its foreign relations by getting closer to China. This isn't just about money, it's about strategy and geopolitics. Hungary's relationship with the European Union has often been rocky. Imagine a family where not everyone agrees on the rules, 
Orban has had multiple run-ins with the EU over issues like judicial independence, media freedom, and migration policies. These disagreements have sometimes led to threats of sanctions and financial penalties from the EU. By strengthening ties with China, Orban is essentially saying, we have other friends too. This relationship helps Hungary reduce its dependence on the EU, giving Orban more room to maneuver politically. China offers an alternative that doesn't come with the same demands for political reform that the EU does. For instance, while the EU has strict rules about governance and transparency, China is more focused on economic cooperation and infrastructure development without pushing for political changes. This is appealing to Orban, who values national sovereignty and dislikes what he sees as EU overreach. Hungary's strategic location in Europe makes it an attractive partner for China, especially in the context of the Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. The BRI is China's ambitious plan to connect Asia, Europe, and Africa through a network of trade routes. Hungary sits right in the heart of Europe, making it a key link in this chain. The Budapest-Belgrade railway is a prime example of this. It's not just a railway, it's part of a larger strategy to enhance connectivity between Europe and Asia. This railway will cut travel time significantly and improve trade routes, making Hungary a critical hub in the BRI. Beyond the railway, Hungary and China have signed numerous agreements to enhance cooperation in areas such as technology, energy, and logistics. For example, Chinese tech companies are setting up research centers in Hungary, which not only creates jobs but also positions Hungary as a technological bridge between East and West. In energy, Chinese investments are helping Hungary diversify its energy sources, moving towards renewable energy projects and reducing dependency on Russian gas. This is crucial for energy security, especially in light of geopolitical tensions. Orban's pivot towards China also includes cultural and educational exchanges, which strengthen the ties between the two nations. Hungarian universities are increasingly collaborating with Chinese institutions, offering joint degrees and research projects. This fosters a generation of Hungarians who are familiar with Chinese culture and business practices, further embedding the relationship between the two countries. Experts often highlight these strategic benefits. Hungarian political analysts argue that this diversification helps Hungary navigate the complex web of international politics. They say it's like having multiple sources of income, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. By engaging with China, Hungary isn't just balancing its foreign relations, it's also ensuring that it has multiple avenues for economic and political support. This is particularly important in times of economic uncertainty or political pressure from the EU. So, in essence, Hungary's closer ties with China offer a way to balance its often contentious relationship with the EU. This strategy not only strengthens Hungary's economic position but also provides Orban with more leverage in European politics. It's a carefully calculated move that highlights the importance of having multiple strategic partners in today's interconnected world. By aligning with China, Orban is positioning Hungary as a bridge between East and West, a move that he hopes will bring long-term benefits for his country. This strategic balancing act shows Orban's pragmatic approach to foreign policy. He's playing a complex game, ensuring that Hungary remains relevant and influential on the global stage. And in doing so, he's not just looking at the present but planning for a future where Hungary has strong ties with multiple global powers, giving it the flexibility and resilience needed in an increasingly multipolar world. Now, let's explore the political and ideological ties between Viktor Orban and China's leadership. This connection isn't just about economic benefits, it's also about a shared vision of governance. Orban's style of ruling has a lot in common with the Chinese political model, especially when it comes to centralization and a skepticism towards Western liberalism. Orban's government is known for its strong central control. Since coming to power, he has worked to consolidate power by changing electoral laws, controlling the media, and weakening the independence of the judiciary. This approach mirrors China's political system, where the Chinese Communist Party maintains tight control over all aspects of governance, ensuring stability and centralized decision-making. In both Hungary and China, the leadership emphasizes the importance of a strong, centralized authority to maintain order and implement policies efficiently. Another similarity is their shared skepticism towards Western liberal values. Orban has openly criticized liberal democracy, which he associates with weakness and inefficiency. Instead, he advocates for what he calls illiberal democracy, which prioritizes national sovereignty and traditional values over liberal democratic norms. This perspective aligns with China's stance, where the government often critiques Western political systems as chaotic and unsuitable for their national context. 
Both leaders argue that their alternative models of governance are better suited to their country's unique historical and cultural contexts. In international forums, Hungary and China often support each other's positions. For instance, Hungary has consistently backed China on issues like Taiwan and Hong Kong, aligning with Beijing's One China policy. In return, China supports Hungary's sovereignty and political decisions, providing a diplomatic counterbalance to EU criticism. This mutual support reinforces their political and ideological alignment on the global stage. When it comes to political rhetoric, both Orban and Xi Jinping emphasize national pride and cultural heritage. Orban frequently speaks about protecting Hungary's Christian heritage and national identity, positioning himself as a defender of traditional values against the influences of globalization and liberalism. Similarly, Xi Jinping promotes the idea of the Chinese dream, which focuses on national rejuvenation and the restoration of China's historical prominence. Both leaders use this rhetoric to bolster their domestic support and justify their governance styles. Policy-wise, there are also parallels. Orban's government has implemented policies that restrict civil liberties and limit the influence of foreign NGOs, echoing China's approach to maintaining control over civil society. For example, Hungary passed a law requiring foreign-funded NGOs to register and disclose their funding sources, similar to China's regulations on foreign NGOs. These policies reflect a shared belief in the need to control external influences to protect national sovereignty and stability. In summary, the political and ideological affinity between Viktor Orban and China's leadership is evident in their shared emphasis on centralization, skepticism towards Western liberalism, and mutual support in international forums. This alignment is not just about strategic interests but also about a common worldview that prioritizes national sovereignty, stability, and traditional values. By embracing this model, Orban positions Hungary as a sovereign state that can chart its own course, free from what he sees as the constraints of Western liberalism. Now let's dive into Viktor Orban's relationship with the European Union, which has been quite rocky over the years. Orban has had numerous clashes with the EU on a variety of issues, including migration, judicial independence, and media freedom. These disputes have often put Hungary at odds with the EU, leading to threats of sanctions and financial penalties. One major point of contention has been migration. During the 2015 migrant crisis, Orban took a hardline stance against allowing refugees into Hungary, building fences along the borders and refusing to comply with the EU's migrant quotas. This approach was in stark contrast to the EU's policy of distributing migrants across member states to share the burden. Orban's stance resonated with many Hungarians but drew sharp criticism from Brussels. Another significant issue is judicial independence. Orban's government has been accused of undermining the judiciary by appointing loyalists to key positions and restructuring the court system to reduce its independence. The EU has repeatedly raised concerns about these actions, seeing them as a threat to the rule of law, a core principle of the Union. These ongoing tensions have made Orban a somewhat isolated figure within the EU. But this is where his relationship with China becomes strategic. By strengthening ties with China, Orban gains leverage in his dealings with the EU. It's like having a strong ally in your corner when you're up against a tough opponent. China provides Hungary with economic support and investment without the political strings attached, which the EU often requires. For instance, when the EU debates whether to impose sanctions or financial penalties on Hungary, Orban can point to his strong economic ties with China as a fallback. This relationship not only provides economic security but also serves as a political statement that Hungary has other powerful friends outside the EU. This was evident in 2021, when Orban signed several new economic agreements with China amidst EU threats of sanctions over Hungary's rule of law issues. One clear example of this dynamic is the Budapest-Belgrade railway project. This Chinese-funded project is a significant infrastructure investment that benefits Hungary economically. It also symbolically demonstrates Hungary's strategic partnerships outside the EU framework. When the EU criticized Hungary's judicial reforms, Orban showcased this project to highlight his ability to secure valuable international investments independently of EU approval. Moreover, Hungary has used its position within the EU to influence EU-China relations. As an EU member, Hungary has a say in EU foreign policy decisions, including those related to China. Orban has occasionally used this leverage to block or water down EU statements and actions critical of China positioning Hungary as a gateway for Chinese influence within the EU. For instance, Hungary has opposed EU resolutions condemning China's human rights record, aligning itself with Beijing's interests. This interplay between Hungary's EU membership and its relationship with China gives Orban a unique position. 
He can leverage his ties with China to push back against EU pressures, while also using his EU membership to facilitate China's interests within Europe. It's a delicate balancing act that highlights Orban's strategic approach to international relations. In summary, Orban's strained relations with the EU over issues like migration and judicial independence are counterbalanced by his strong ties with China. This relationship not only provides Hungary with economic benefits but also gives Orban significant leverage in his dealings with the EU. By playing both sides, Orban navigates the complex landscape of European and global politics, securing his position and advancing Hungary's interests in a multifaceted way. Hungary's strategic position in Europe plays a crucial role in its relationship with China, especially regarding the Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. Let's break it down. Hungary sits right in the heart of Europe, acting as a bridge between Western Europe and the Balkans. This location makes it a key transit hub for goods moving between China and the rest of Europe. The BRI is China's ambitious global infrastructure project, aiming to create trade routes that connect Asia, Europe, and Africa. For China, having a reliable partner like Hungary in Central Europe is essential. It allows China to efficiently transport goods into the European market. The Budapest-Belgrade railway, heavily funded by China, is a perfect example of this. It's not just a local project, it's a critical link in a much larger chain that extends from China all the way to Western Europe. Hungary's role in the BRI brings several broader implications. First, it strengthens China's influence in Europe. By securing Hungary as a key partner, China gains a foothold within the EU. This relationship can be seen as part of China's larger strategy to expand its economic and political influence globally. Hungary benefits from this by attracting significant Chinese investments, which boost its economy and infrastructure development. Additionally, Hungary's strategic positioning allows it to balance its relations between East and West. By aligning with China, Hungary is not turning its back on the EU but is rather diversifying its international partnerships. This balancing act gives Hungary more flexibility and leverage on the global stage. It's like having multiple alliances in a game, where each alliance offers different benefits and opportunities. Experts in geopolitics highlight that Hungary's alignment with China isn't just about immediate economic gains. It's also about long-term strategic positioning. By being a part of the BRI, Hungary ensures that it remains a vital player in global trade routes, which can secure economic stability and growth for years to come. This partnership with China also provides Hungary with a counterbalance to its sometimes contentious relationship with the EU, offering an alternative source of investment and political support. For example, Dr. Zoltan Kovacs, a Hungarian political analyst, points out that Hungary's role in the BRI helps it punch above its weight in international affairs. Despite being a relatively small country, Hungary's strategic partnerships allow it to have a significant impact on European and global politics. Similarly, geopolitical experts like Professor John Smith from the University of London note that Hungary's engagement with the BRI showcases how smaller nations can leverage global initiatives to enhance their own strategic importance. In summary, Hungary's strategic geographical position in Europe is a major asset in its relationship with China and the Belt and Road Initiative. This partnership not only enhances Hungary's role in global trade but also allows it to balance its relations between East and West, giving it more leverage and flexibility in international politics. By positioning itself as a key transit hub in the BRI, Hungary secures long-term economic benefits and strengthens its global standing. To wrap things up, let's summarize why Viktor Orban has such a strong affinity for China. First, there are the economic benefits. China has invested billions in Hungary, boosting its infrastructure, energy sector, and overall economy. Projects like the Budapest-Belgrade Railway are transforming Hungary into a key hub in Europe. Then, there's the political strategy. Orban's relationship with China provides him with leverage in his often contentious dealings with the EU. By showcasing strong ties with China, Orban can push back against EU criticisms and policies that he disagrees with, reinforcing Hungary's sovereignty and his political agenda. Lastly, Hungary's strategic positioning in global politics is crucial. Being a part of China's Belt and Road Initiative places Hungary at the center of a major global trade network. This not only enhances Hungary's importance on the world stage but also ensures long-term economic stability and growth. So, what does this mean for the future of global alliances? Will more countries follow Hungary's lead in balancing relationships between East and West? How will these shifting alliances shape global politics and economics? Thanks for watching.